Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back for another video. I recently checked out the Friday the 13th Part 3 documentary screening in Beverly Hills. As a lover of all things Friday the 13th, I had to check this out, of course, dedicated to the late great Richard Brooker, who famously played uh, Jason Voorhees in Part 3, of course. And, yeah, had a freaking blast, great event. Uh, thank you to everybody involved, you know, down to the producers, the director. I mean, everybody that helped uh, just make it, you know, come to fruition. And about to show you guys the Q and A for that event. So stick around. Right. So we, um, this girl does it. that really inspired me to come out to Hollywood and to follow my dreams and eventually write the book. And I've met so many fans and other uh, now filmmakers who said the same thing. I think this franchise has really inspired a lot of people, despite what critics said at the time. Um, it really has a lasting legacy. So I am personally really excited to be here tonight. And it's a real privilege to introduce this documentary. So again, thanks to the filmmakers and everyone else who showed up tonight. Um, a couple quick shout outs. First of all, to all the sponsors of this screening. Uh, there's too many to list. I just want to say thank you for supporting this project. And second, <laughs> it's a beautiful theater. I mean, how often do you actually get to see an actual documentary on the big screen? So that's pretty rare. So it's, again, another really, really special part of this evening. And then secondly, uh, again, a big shout out to all of you guys because all proceeds and donations tonight go to the you know, Los Angeles Children's Hospital. So. <laughs> so yeah, it's great to do something like this and also be able to get to the work to a working class. So. Um, so, since we have a limited amount of time here, um, you get right to our panel. We have a great lineup of guests. So, I'm going to just spend one at a time. Take a seat here first. Um, and there's Jason. I guess, I guess he's just going to sit right here. Um, I'm a little afraid here. Uh, <laughs> so, first, uh, I'd like to introduce. First of all, we have the director of the documentary, Mr. Kevin Phipps. Smoke or drink or do drugs. <laughs> uh, next, we have a writer and executive producer, Mr. Sean Richards. <laughs> we have the producer of the documentary, uh, Mr. Ruben Angelo. Ruben! We have an actor who you probably don't recognize as Roy, a.k.a. Imposter Jason, from part five, Mr. Dick Wien. <laughs> Actually, before we start the panel, we have a little surprise for our filmmakers. Uh, Joe Quinella would like to come up and give a little special something. Thank you, everybody, for showing up and supporting us. This is such a treat for us to have every single one of you guys here. We can't thank you enough. Uh, what I'm going to do next is going to be very quickly. I want to thank the people that I work with on this journey that lasted about three years for us. That's how long it did. It was one of the most amazing jobs I ever done. Uh, everybody involved, and you're going to see up in the main, the main screen, they're all dear, close friends of mine. And... It took a lot of courage to do what you guys are going to see up there in a little bit. And first of all, I want to say something about what I have in my hands. I have a mask that was made by artist Tony Jarvis, who basically is the closest thing that you will get to a Friday the 13th Part 3 hockey mask. This is the kind of mask that was probably used most likely before all the, the last part of the film, you know, the acts and all that good stuff. And so it's my honor to give one of these masks to certain people of my crew and cap up here that I have in front of me. First of all, to my director, that without his vision, we would not be here today. Kevin Phipps, I want to say thank you to you for doing what you did in this project. So 
tiny little space up here, by the way, guys. He will be far off the stage. All right. Uh, next, with our, my executive producer, Sean Richards, this project would not exist right now. So I want to say thank you so much for guiding us and obviously funding us to get this project done. Thank you, Sean Richards, for everything you did for us, brother. I want to give you also one of these hockey masks. Finally, to my other producer, who is also an actor, Ruben Angelo. Ruben! Ruben Angelo. Yeah, together, uh-oh, the mic just turned on. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Technical problems, Peter. Okay, I can sing a song. Okay, so uh, Ruben and I worked together very closely on this project for the last three years, and endless red tape that we had to do to get this project done. Ruben Angelo also is an actor, as I said. A very good actor, so if you're out there hiring, hey, knock on Ruben's door. <laughs> Ruben Angelo, thank you so Yay! much, baby. <laughs> and finally, I want to do something very special to one of our fans. Her name is Sarah Church. Sarah! Who's been our support. This mic's just I know. It's been our support since day one. When is this going to come out? When can I come to the big screen and see it? Well, Sarah, we made it possible for you to be here tonight. Sarah Church, I don't know where you're at. If you come up here for a second, please. Give a big round of Sarah Church is the queen of horror, just so you guys know. She's pretty much at every convention, and every single movie star loves this girl here. And I want to say thank you to this girl for being our number one supporter. And so I have the entire cast and crew sign one of these little posters that I'm going to present to her that she can frame in her wall. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Bring it back to Peter. Another round of applause. <laughs> All right, so we'll start with um, the filmmakers, which is where you guys want to jump. So Both wants to jump in. So obviously, Friday the Thirteenth has been around for almost four years now. There's been you know the documentaries and books written. So maybe walk us through the impetus that started this project and why you chose Part Three to focus on. Um, yeah, so first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, it really means a lot to us here. Thank you. Um, um, I had the idea for this the day I heard news from a friend that Richard Brooker had passed away. And Richard was, he was a terrific person. Um, and uh, that day I had this idea of, because um, I used to do set video and photography in my 20s, and I had visited the set of part three. And um, that same year uh, that I visited the set, the, um, the cabin had uh, burned to the ground. Um, and when I heard that Richard had passed away, my initial idea was to share my set video photography with the fans and dedicate it to Richard. And, and, that, and then, that was the initial idea, and um, and then I, uh, well, I, I ran into this guy, <laughs> and um, we just kind of went from there, and he um, uh, was like, well, you know, that, that's great and everything, that's wonderful, you want to do that, but um, you should do a little bit more, you know, you need a script. And I'm like, uh, okay, uh, well, I guess you write about part three, you know, about Richard, and I just knew that um, he was a, a, a good guy. Uh, with my interactions with him, and um, I had no idea until these interviews were underway, all the things that he did. Um, and I'm just with every interview, I just kept going. What? Wow. Um, it was it was quite a journey, and I want to thank everybody up here and uh, all of you for coming out tonight. It really means a lot to us. Does that work? There we go. 
Um, so did the focus at all change or shift as you did more interviews, as you discovered new things? Did, did it substantially change, or was it pretty much the same as you mentioned it originally? Um, I mean, we did a lot of research, obviously, and uh, the, the, some of the interviews did take us different directions, so I'm sure you know. Um, so sometimes we're like, oh, uh, well, that doesn't work the way we thought it was going to be, so now we're going to have to uh, go that direction, which is fun. And then, you know, you... Uh, you dig in that rabbit hole for a while, and you realize the rabbit hole goes really deep. And so, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I think some of it, but I think a lot of it, we stick to the script as much as possible. Anything new, we learn, we put into the thing. So, uh, Tiff, you're very unique in the series in that you played Roy, an uh, everyday character, but you were also Jason, in a way. You were one of the few actors to don the mask in any sort of capacity. So, um, you know, at the time, you took the role Friday the 13th was not that well regarded. Did you have any reservations, or what was your feeling about jumping into this part at the time? Well, uh, when my agent called me and told me I got the part, uh, she said, all the little children will love you. <laughs> <laughs> really? And I had no idea who Jason was. So I went and I got part one with Ari, and I thought, well, that's a, good, that's a nice film. That's a pretty good film. Then I watched part two. Uh, with the bag over his head, Steve Dash. And then, then I got the part three with Richard and the mask. And I just thought, holy hell, <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? I, I don't know what, what I'm going to do here. That's when I thought I was going to be in all the scenes. It wasn't until later that they decided that they were going to have someone else do it. And um, so, anyway, it was really kind of, kind of weird. Um, um, and uh, you know, Carolyn and uh, Tracy actually worked with Richard. I never did. Uh, I just knew him socially. Um, but I really missed the guy. And I was, I was kind of struck dumb when I found out that he died. Did, when you, did you reach out to the other Jasons and sense that? I didn't know any of them. Did you become friends afterward? With, with oh yeah. Well, like Richard and I would meet each other at autograph shows. We'd search each other out. Actually, that's how we, we, we became you know friends. And uh, um, so, but I didn't at the time. I didn't know anything about Friday the Thirteenth. I didn't know anything about any of the Jasons. Of course, there were only three. But four. Four. Ted White. Or, uh, no, CJ was four. No, Ted was four. Um, and. Um, the first time I met Richard was at the airport. We were, we were getting on a plane to go to Good Morning America, always. And I didn't know who he was, but he knew who I was. And he said to me, he said, I bet you didn't think Jason was going to get you this far, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's amazing. A lot of the actors I talked to over the years, you know, when they did the film, they thought, oh, it's just a small little horror film, and they had no idea what it was to become. Was there a moment? Over the years, and you realize, like, wow, I'm a part of something like, massive, you know? Well, it's been said that the Friday series is one of the bigger uh, conglomerate, the Star Wars, certainly. But then, then after that, it's Friday. And I had, and I had no idea. Of course, I only did one. You have to ask Kane. You know? <laughs> 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 so for the filmmakers, what was, uh, maybe like each of you, what was the probably the biggest surprise or something new you learned that you didn't know before you started this documentary? Well, what I really, what I really discovered, and I'm really grateful um, that, you know, I'm an 80s horror kid, and <laughs> I think a lot of you guys are too. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, my, my mom and stepdad, they were like, you yeah, know, you can't watch those movies. And so I go to my dad's every weekend, and he'd uh, talk it into it, and he'd run them on Betamax, way of the future. <laughs> <laughs> so I got into him by default, and then telling me, uh, I guess that makes me a little bit of a DVD kid, you're going to tell me I'm not going to do something. I don't want to know why. And uh, so I'm, I'm so glad I did, uh, because years later, um, it led me to meet some of the most wonderful people I've ever met in my life uh, that work on these films, um, behind the scenes. Dick is just a fantastic person. I 
and <laughs> Carolyn and Tracy and everybody that we've had come along on board with us in this journey. Um, and here's, here's another one of them, Miss Carolyn Williams. Let's bring her out. So Carolyn Williams, if you don't know, she has not been in a Friday 13th film, but I really think she has been in every single other franchise, or major horror franchise. You know her from roles in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, Stepfather, Leprechaun, Hatchet, um, Halloween. I think she's in New Sharknado as well. So let's bring Carolyn Williams up here to one of the up here. Sorry I'm late. It's my son's birthday today. Born on the 13th. That's amazing. Pardon? He's he's, he's born on the 13th. He was born on Friday the 13th. Is his name Jason? And this... The spirit of Jason lives within him, I promise you. (laughs) Freddy vs. Jason is his number one. Really? Yeah. So, um, quick question for you. So, we know you're not a part of the Friday Night franchise directly, but you have a very special connection. Can you talk a little bit about how you came to be involved in Back in Um, You know, Richard and I had a long flirtation from the time we first met on the convention circuit because... Obviously, he was an incredibly charming man, and he was extremely well-educated. He was very cultured, but he was very streetwise. I mean, he was a bad boy, but at the same time, you know, he knew he could run through Shakespeare effortlessly. And uh, um, one of the more unique and unusual things that we also had in common is I had once had a drinking career that could have possibly matched his at one point. With the difference that I, I got sober and and have lived the the rest of my life uh, in sobriety, I can't say that I tried. <laughs> I can't say that I tried to get him sober, but he did have a very strong spiritual dimension within him, and um, and he struggled. Uh, with his alcohol. I don't know if it's appropriate for me to be talking about this. I talk about it in the docu, so. That was great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, we have our, our last panelist, uh, it's just Miss Tracy Savage. If she would like to come up. Come on, Tracy. You part time from as well as Debbie, of course. <laughs> He's waiting for you. Old friend, Tracy. path to Friday 13th is, as I remember, you were kind of in transition in your life in terms of career. Can you talk a little bit about how you came to the role playing you decided to do Friday 3 originally? Sure. Um, I was uh, in college and first year and getting ready to move uh, to the University of Michigan. And um, I worked as a child actress since I was two. And my agent was this slave driving Oh, hi, Mom. (laughs) Um, Judy Savage of the Savage Agency. Uh, I was already um, interested in becoming a journalist, and I already knew what I wanted to do, and I interned at a TV station, and I knew the direction I was going in, and so I was pretty much done with the business. Uh, I had worked since I was two, but I wasn't the greatest of actresses, so I knew I couldn't make it as an adult actor, it just wasn't in me. 
Um, thank you. I saw that. <laughs> um, but uh, so I knew I was going to move on. And um, uh, my mom called me and said, hey, you know, they're looking for someone for a role. They're looking for a little slut. And I think you can move on. <laughs> and so uh, I said, thanks, mom. Um, and I went on the interview. Didn't know what it was for. It was called uh, Crystal Japan on the script. <laughs> Uh, anyway, got the role, and um, I thought, you know what, it's going to help pay for out-of-state tuition at U of M. Still really didn't even know what it was about, um, but thought it would be fun, and it what ended up being a wonderful time, a great experience, lots of fun. Uh, six weeks of uh, really just being like a camp, literally, uh, with a bunch of kids my own age, and um, uh, all the effects and the death scenes and having a knife sticking out of my neck, it was great. It was just a couple of months. <laughs> and I went off to college and uh, didn't talk about my acting career for years because I didn't want to be thought of as the, um, you know, the, I wanted to be taken seriously as a journalist. And so I didn't talk about much for probably 10 years. And then um, it became such a kind of a campy, fun thing. And now I love it, and I talk about it all the time. <laughs> 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 So one last question real fast before we shut the screen is for the filmmakers. So what's next for the documentary? Uh, what are your plans for it? When can other fans hopefully see it? Yeah, so after this screening, we'll be doing another premiere out in Arizona and a couple of other states. And from there, we were looking into a few options for distribution. Um, if you follow, follow our Facebook page, you'll see all the updates on there. And uh, we t uh, today, we're actually at another in film festival, right? Out in New York. So, simultaneous. Thank you again, everyone. Again, Tracy Savage, Kevin Phipps, Sean Richards, Stephen Thank you, everybody. All right, everyone. Going to show you guys what I got signed at the Friday the 13th Part 3, the Memoriam documentary screening. Uh, took the liberty, you know, to print out an 11 by 17 of the poster for the documentary and had it signed by some of the uh, producers, the director, as well as the cast, uh, including Dick Weand, Tracy Savage, and Carolyn Williams, who were all in attendance. And pretty cool friggin' poster to frame up, you know, to, just to show appreciation for um, what these guys are doing. I mean, I love anything Friday the 13th, and... This was definitely freaking awesome to watch uh, with a room full of uh, Friday the 13th fans. So, yeah, gonna hang this baby up pretty soon. It's gonna look freaking awesome with all those signatures. And as I said, Carolyn Williams herself showed up to the screening, so I absolutely had to add her on my Texas Chainsaw 2 poster. Such an underrated sequel, in my opinion. I already have it signed by Leatherface himself, Bill Johnson. Chop Top, Bill Mosley, and there's the new signature, so pretty close to uh, completing this poster. And as I mentioned, Carolyn Williams was at the screening, so I had to uh, have her sign my Texas Chainsaw 2, as well as moving on to third entries in different franchises. She starred in Hatchet 3 and Leprechaun 3, of course. My Hatchet 3 previously signed by Adam Green and Joel David Moore. Adam Green, of course, the director of the first two, and he's now returning for the fourth entry, titled Victor Crowley. Joel David Moore played Ben in the original, and he reprised his role in a, a small cameo in Part 3. Now, got three signatures on there, and this series is so freaking cheesy. I don't care what anybody says. I love the Leprechaun movies. I mean, they're, they're just fun. They're just fun for me, so... Both series I love. Had to have Carolyn Williams uh, sign both. And yeah, she was a total sweetheart. Had no problem signing for any of the fans. Freaking awesome. Roy Burns himself, Dick Wind, showed up. So, of course, had to take full advantage and have him sign an official 8x10. I freaking love, you know, Part 5 is one of my favorite sequels. I don't know how many times I've said it in some of my past videos, but yeah. It just doesn't get uh, the praise it deserves, in my opinion. It's truly underrated. So it was an honor meeting him, and he was happy as shit just signing for fans. You know, he can, yeah, he was just such a great guy to meet. So, so freaking happy I finally got to meet him.
And I had to have my Blu-ray and DVD combo pack of Crystal Lake Memories, which is already signed by a bunch of people. Uh, I had to have Tracy Savage added to it. And Dick Wind, Roy Burns himself. I did purchase this uh, a couple years ago. It did come with the bonus disc. It was at the uh, premiere at a Dark Delicacies event, I believe, back in 2014. So as you guys can see, uh, Blu-ray and DVD combo pack. Pretty freaking awesome. Uh, I mean, look at all those signatures. Already got quite a few people, but, you know, I'm running out of real estate on it, but still squeeze in quite a few signatures somewhere in there. And as you guys can see, my Friday the 13th Crystal Lake Memories poster. You know, I've shown this poster countless times uh, in several of my past videos, getting names added to it, of course. But these two were pretty freaking special. I got Tracy Savage from Part 3 and Dick Wind, Roy Burns from Part 5. Super rare names, you know, they're hardly ever out here for conventions or signings or anything of that kind. So, for me to finally be able to get those names on here, freaking amazing, um, you know, just adding to the list. I mean, running out of room, but hey, it's worth it. Still got, uh, I can still squeeze in plenty of more signatures on here, so pretty freaking awesome poster. And there you guys have it. Fun event, great uh, insightful Q&A, and of course the documentary itself is great on the late great uh, Richard Brooker. Which, uh, you know, I had some insightful information that I certainly didn't know beforehand. And that's always great when you can just learn new information about just the series in general. I mean, as a huge Friday the 13th fan, I'm sure you guys are as well. I don't know if they plan to release it, like, on DVD or anything like that. So just, you know, stay updated, like, on their Facebook page and all that good stuff. And since we're on the subject of Friday the 13th, a fun little uh, Friday the 13th fan film I actually associate produced... We worked very hard on it, guys. Um, if you haven't checked it out already, Never Hike Alone, of course. Uh, yeah, we worked countless hours. Sometimes we go days without, you know, little to little to virtually no sleep. But it's all for the love of Friday the 13th. It's by the fans, for the fans, you know what I mean? So we worked really hard on it. So feel free to check that out as well. Uh, I'll leave the link down in the description. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And see you guys for the next one.